If you're a four wheel driver, you would definitely be looking at one point in your life to do a lap of show. Yeah. Oh, oh my wow. mama. Really watch this, folks, because these guys are living and breathing it as we speak. Right now. have got some amazing tips with regards to saving money. Mm -hmm. This is me. Oh, <laughs> well, mate, cheers. Cheers. Good, Good to see you. It's been a hot minute. Mm -hmm. We've actually, a bit of a light, we've actually just come back from Adelaide. We spent a couple of days down in Adelaide together for the Adelaide 4-Wheel Drive Show. But before that, been a long time. It has been a long time, mate. This is the first time seeing the this workshop. Brand new workshop. I'm down here in our jock's den, yeah. I'm going to call this. All sorts of things happen in here. Yeah. That's there's one a, of them. There's a bit going on. You can see it's a it's a hover pony at the moment because yeah. I'm doing a lot of work. But uh, voice to me is a bit fancy. Yeah, mate. What have you been up to? Mate, I have been living the dream. Literally, I've just uh, covered 12,000 kilometres uh, and filmed five episodes of a new show. It's sort of a van touring show, Sean People Australia. That's uh, unreal. And that's only WA. 12,000 kilometres just in WA. Just in WA. Insane. Mate, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. Speaking of loving it, mate, how about we get into it? We've got a number of mates at the moment that are doing... The big lap. The dream, the dream lap, lap. The big hot lap of Australia. So we got to talking over a few beers, because we've just come back from the Adelaide show. Mm -hmm. We got to talking about what does it take? How do you do... Because I reckon if you're a four-wheel driver, doesn't matter what you drive, you would definitely be looking at one point in your life to do a lap of Australia. Yeah, I know I am, yep. for, definitely. But um, I guess the, the big thing that everyone sort of factors in when they want to do something like that is the cost. So big I guess time. it comes down to what we were talking about. How do you do it under a certain amount a week? And mm -hmm. I guess the magic number we came up with yep. was 600 bucks, which- 600 a week. Doesn't yeah. sound like much. No, but when you break it down- Under yeah, $100 a day. Which the cost of fuel right now may seem like it's but I reckon it could be achievable because there are people out there right now that are doing that. Mm -hmm. We'll get to those people in a minute. We're actually going to cross to them and they're doing a lap of Australia as we speak. And they're going to share their tips and secrets. There's some, actually, there's some cracking tips yeah. in there. But 600 bucks a week, I think the biggest one in everyone's mind right now, and rightfully so, will be the cost of fuel. Yeah, that's the biggest one. There is, uh, yeah, there's no real way to save on fuel other than dig it up yourself. Yeah, which that's is tricky to do. do. That's yeah. tricky to do. But there are some tips these guys have been doing mm -hmm. to allow you to make the most of your fuel. I remember when I did the lap, one of the things I did was only do one travel day a week. Okay. So yeah. I would stay in that one area for pretty much a week, five days, mm -hmm. thereabouts. I would only do one big travel day. Yep. So rather than doing lots of little steps and moving all the time, which tends to use a lot of fuel, mm -hmm. I just do one big one, stop, camp for a week. And I guess it just depends on what sort of trip you want to do. If yeah, you want to do it in six months, for example, you're yep. going to be traveling a lot more and burning through a lot more fuel yep. than you would if you were taking 12, 18 months. Which is what Josh so. is doing at the moment. He's going very, very fast, but he's seeing it quickly and getting back home again. Yep. So it's, it depends the way you want to do it. I mean, either way, you're going to have a ball. Rightio, mate. So I think the number one thing for me is you've got to set yourself a budget. We've sort yep. of done that with our 600 bucks and we'll top that up with a bit more info as we go. The next one is, for me, the biggest one, because everyone's going to do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. When? Well, I'm going to Yeah. set a date. That's a big one. Yeah, huge. yeah, yep. It's a huge one. Because if you, I reckon mentally, if you go, I'm leaving on May the 1st, yep. then you're like, oop, I'm leaving on May yep. the 1st. And I better get things sorted. You've got nine months to get ready. Mm -hmm. You can start planning how much you need to save each week, yep. you know, how to build your vehicle up. It becomes much more real, doesn't Very it? Very real. Yeah, the day yeah. you circle that thing on the calendar, yep. you almost don't want to let yourself down. You're no. going to go May the 1st. So setting a date, you're no longer a gunner, it's happening. What you're about doing? things like set up, like to tow yeah, or time. not to tow? Would Huge. You? Yeah. Huge. I'm going to let you answer the first one. To tow or not to tow? I think, I think, I mean, I'm not a tow rig driver yep. by any means, but I think I would. And it goes back to, I remember what you said to me years ago when I was a little young boy. <laughs> You know, yes. uh, you said to me that one of the most important things to consider is you want a place to retreat to when the weather is bad, somewhere mm -hmm. that's nice that you can get out because you'll end up just, you know, trying to get in front of the that's weather exactly the whole time. You'll miss a lot of the country. Yep. So yep. Um, I think I would, I probably wouldn't tow anything big. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I'm at that stage in my life yet. I yep. probably would tow like a small camper trailer, yep. but something that you can set up and leave as a base camp maybe uh, that's nice to retreat to if the weather's bad but I can stay in one spot. Yeah, I 100% go with that and it's I think also what it comes down to is how long you're going for. Mm. If you're only going for six months, you can stay in front of the weather and you can move reasonably quickly and you maybe don't need to tow. Mm -hmm. You'll be quite comfortable with your morning yep. setup, etc, etc. If you're leaving for 12, 18, even thinking of finding a job on the road, mm -hmm. I would say you'd be mad not to tow. Yeah, yeah, I reckon so. Now you said you would, something yeah, small. Yeah, something small I think would be a key thing for yep. me. I think the elephant in the room when it comes to towing is people think they can't go places because they're towing. Mm. That is the biggest furphy out there. You've just got to be a bit smart about it. So what I did is made a base camp. Mm -hmm. So if you make a base camp somewhere close to a hard track or a difficult section of beach to access. And just do day trips. Just do day trips. Mm -hmm. So what I would do, and I'm going to do, is put a rooftop tent 
on the Y62 mm -hmm. and tow with it. That's, I make myself a base camp, super comfortable, awning out, got a fire going, put the fire out, go out for the day. Heck, this is awesome. Stay the night in the rooftop tent, come back to your base camp. Yeah, and the best part is with that setup, like that's a pretty decent setup as well. Some Sick. people would be doing a lap like that. So yep. you could leave the, if you really wanted to get super remote, you're like, I know I can't get the caravan, caravan there. You could leave for a couple of days. Oh, easily, go away for a week, two yeah. weeks, it doesn't matter. But the beauty of it is you can come back and you've got all your toys are in the van. You can take so much, you can take heaps more with the van. You're so much more comfortable, you're out of the elements. Fuel. Mm, that's, okay. yeah. I'll give you some real world figures with the Y62. Mm -hmm. So not towing, I use about 18 litres per 100. 20 litres per 100, roughly, not towing. Honestly, I thought it'd be worse. Everyone does. Mm. So not towing, it's about 18 litres per 100. Sometimes I can get lower than that if I just sit on a nice, comfortable road. Yep. Towing, religiously, I've got the same figure and it's sitting on 105 to 110 using cruise control, which you shouldn't do, because cruise control, you know, but I would lock it into yep. lower yep. gears. Yep. I was getting 25 litres per 100 everywhere. It never changed. That's pretty impressive. So it's a difference of about seven litres per 100, roughly. There's one other thing there too with towing that, and it goes back to setting the vehicle up. Yeah, big time. I think it is crucial, obviously, to set the vehicle up so that it can tow the van safely. Yeah. And a good way to do that is the person who's installing your suspension, take the van as well. Take it with them, make sure it's sitting level, they can measure everything, yep. they can make sure it's weighted with yep. the right springs. Yep. You know, the, the bias of weight in the mm -hmm. van too, you mm -hmm. can get the right tow bolt download, weight distribution, all that sort of stuff. That's a huge topic in and yeah. of itself. Mm. And I don't think we give it anywhere near enough attention in Australia. I've seen some shocking setups out there. Things that are towing like this, yeah. towing Ooh. like this, vans it's that are doing it's dangerous. this. It's shockingly yeah. dangerous. Uh, not having, just not having the experience towing as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. get into a, a you know, three and a half ton car with a three ton van behind you, you are a, you know about it. You if that thing it. Get, let's go, you, you're you going to find out real quick. <laughs> real quick, it's, it's dangerous. So yeah, learn to tow. Another one, we always make fun of it, learn to reverse. <laughs> reversing, I see some shock and reversing going on, especially in caravan parks. Mm. Can be quite tight, learn to reverse. Just do a bit of practice and get out. I know it's it's boring, it's yeah, granddaddish. And it's it. embarrassing, but is, you know, but even yeah. just get some cones or yeah, something like that in a car or, park. Or, or practice. Or, even that, but that comes down to even those smaller camper trails that you can't really see that well, like yep. you'll be doing it, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I've checked knives Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens really easy, but for me, I'm going to finish it off by saying, I never thought I would be a towing person. I am 100% a towing person. I love it. What about this one too? A bit of a little tangent, but yep. towing a boat. Because like I'm not a good fisher by any means, mm, mm. but I would like to, you know, throw a few casts. Is that, is that the word? Throw, throw some a few casts? Cast, cast, cast a I few lines? I would you don't tow a boat, mate. Maybe <laughs> take someone out with it. But what I'm getting at is <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. how often would you use the boat whereas you're towing it around the whole time yep. to realistically put it in very limited, yeah. I reckon. Unless it is the absolute override. If it was Sean Whale, he'd tow a boat. He'd tow a boat. Yeah, he'd he'd absolute way. overriding passion, tow a boat. But it is a one-use item mm. that is taking up a whole heap of extra fuel, space, weight. Yeah. And unless you are mad about fishing, mm -hmm. I don't think towing a boat's worthwhile. You can hire them just about everywhere. Yep. Uh, even if you got somewhere and you bought a little titty, you've budgeted that in and sold it again when you left. Yeah. Uh, Steph and Harley, for example, that have been going with me, they are doing exactly that. Right, okay. Just gonna buy a little tinny and they're gonna sell it before they leave. So that answers that end. one. Yeah, 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 okay. That's what I'd do. What about timing? That's a really big one because mm. you've got northern half of Australia, no good during the wet season. Mm -hmm. Southern half, freezing, bloom and cold during, the, during <laughs> yeah. the winter. So you wanna try, it's a difficult one depending on where you're setting off from. Uh, when I left, we left uh, in December, or just after, sorry, just after, and we went south. So yep. from southern WA and followed the sun all the way around. Then we hightailed it up through the east coast so that we got that northern section when it was kind of starting to get into the build up. A little bit uncomfortable, but you just, you gotta, you gotta grin and bear it. Yeah, so I guess it's the thing, do you go north or south? That, yeah. that will dictate what time of year you leave. Definitely does. Yeah, Definitely depending does. on where you are in Australia. Like I'm yeah. in Sydney, I don't know which way I go, maybe north. First. Well, it would depend on what time of year you leave. Yeah, true. Definitely true. would. Righto guys, it's giveaway time and this one is an absolute cracker. One lucky winner will get themselves either a four litre kit of Tintable, which is what this one is, or a four litre kit of Black Raptor plus an aerosol can of your choice. These are perfect for touch ups on things like bar work, real easy to use. And these can be tinted with any normal automotive two pack paint. Like how we painted the pony in this color, this uh, olive drab color, we just mixed it with the Raptor and we're good to go. So to win, Jump in the comments below and tell us what you'd Raptor if you won this kit. Maybe you've got a project coming up, maybe you want to paint your whole vehicle like I've just done. Let us know and good luck. I've got to be honest, I wish I was having a beer with you boys in the shed, but unfortunately, I've got to put up with views from the campsite just like this. Yeah, that's right. I'm in Tasmania, living the dream myself at the moment. But I wanted to remind you folks that four-wheel drive frenzy is here. And this is the time to shop. Get ready for Christmas, because it means you've got to save big. I'm talking about brands that we use and trust, like Matchtracks, 
Raptor, Ultimate 9, Snatch Recovery, and so much more. Do yourself a favor, get in early, save big, fulldrop247.com. Yeah, this is an interesting one because I guess it comes down to what works for you. And I feel mm. like I'm, I've uh, spoken with my mate, Tim, who went around the country and he said that he actually sent a lot of stuff home that he took. Steph and Harley did exactly the same thing. Yeah, so yep. I guess you, you, you'll probably start out with more than you think you need. You and yep. once you get on the road, I think you'll find out very quickly where things go and where yep. things like to be in their home. Yep. But I think that'll, the point I'm trying to get to is before you go, doing shakedown runs oh, with time. your vehicle because you'll learn where everything you might like something yep. here or you'll put something there and then you'll take it out there and that doesn't work. Um, which I guess probably brings me to this point down here, but I'm going to talk about it now because yep. setting up get... your vehicle, I mean, as I mentioned, I haven't done a lap, but where I guess I could come into is setting up your vehicle properly mm. and that's with weight, um, suspension, so all important. that sort of stuff that you got to think about. Yep. And uh, the other big one is, is spares for your four-wheel yep. drive as well. So yep. one big thing that uh, I think is important with your four-wheel drive, getting out and using it with those shakedown runs. And yep. then when you get your new stuff, don't just chuck it in the back and go, yep, cool, I've got my spares. Service the vehicle at home or get yep. the mechanic to service it. And if your spare parts that are, or if your old parts that are already on the vehicle are, okay. are in reasonable condition, yep. use them as spares. And yep. the reason for that is you'll know they will fit. So if you break down in the middle of nowhere, you can chuck that one back on. Yeah, it's not going to, or it might do the rest of the trip, but mm -hmm. it'll at least get you to the next town. That's right, at least you've got it. At least you've got it. Yep. And you know it's going to fit because the last thing, you know, with modern vehicles with their confusing servant time mm -hmm. belts and stuff yep. is if you get a spare one and you, you're in the middle of nowhere and you chuck it on and it doesn't fit, then you're, then you're in trouble. You so. are, you're stuffed. A couple of things I've learned from doing 12,000 kilometres in the last few months, and I should have known better, I did not take that Y62 on any shakedown runs, mm -hmm. and I am gutting it. Mm -hmm. when I, it's, it's at home at the moment, I am gutting it and starting again because I learned that I had everything in the wrong spot. Yep, yep. And, totally. it, and you can you can think as as well as you can before you go in the yep. shed, think, yeah, I want to put that here, put that there. You go out into the bush, and it won't work. It doesn't work. Yeah. It, it, literally, it didn't make my life a misery, but I just kept thinking, why did I put that drawer there? Mm -hmm. I can't get into it, I can't use it. I moved it over here just a little bit. I can put a table down there, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So I'm gutting my mitts canopy when I get home. Mm -hmm. And, and I've spoken to Tim. Yep. yep. And we're going again. We're starting yeah. again. And I guess that's also a thing too, if you're going with your partner or your kids, taking them out too, and yep. they can, you know, learn Use how things, yep, yep. where things Definitely. are on the vehicle. And Definitely. Then, yep. Yeah. Very important one. Let's get really boring. Mm. Insurance. Yeah. How does that work? Same as you would do on road at home, mm -hmm. but now you're just traveling. Just let your insurance company know. Just tell them you're going to be on the road for a while. They will probably say things like, okay, you're not going to be able to lock the vehicle up at night. It's not going to be in a lockable garage. So things might change with your insurance. But trust me when I say, if anything does go wrong out there, you're going to want to be covered. Yep. And I guess the other thing too is probably having some form of breakdown assistance when you're yep. on the road. Like you think about it, that's something that's a luxury when you can get to and from a repair. When you're out on the road, you might need to be towed yep. quite some distance. Having like RSAQ or NRMA or something yeah, like something that like will that. come into its own, I think. And just check your insurance policies too to make sure you are covered in some of the more remote off-road locations and generally speaking so long as it's a gazetted road mm -hmm. i think the beaches on fraser island are even a gazetted road yeah right. you can actually get total coverage out. yeah super important I super think. important yeah, yeah yeah well look it's one thing to sit here and spout off about it mm -hmm. but we've got a bunch of mates on the road at the moment living and breathing the big trip the big lap the, yeah uh, the big circumnavigation of the island mate they are they are indeed and uh the first ones josh and claudia so we work with shui Heaps. Heaps, yeah, yep. yep. And he decided to pack up his uh, 200 series and head on the road. We've actually got a video from them too, so. what? And, and he, really watch this, folks, because these guys are living and breathing it as we speak. Right and they've now. got some amazing tips with regards to saving money. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Josh. And I'm Claudia. And we're currently traveling Australia in our 2008 200 series Land Cruiser. We have been on the road for five months so far. And in that time, we've been to Cape York, across into NT, Uluru, Alice Springs, all the way up to Kakadu, Litchfield, Darwin, and then across in WA, doing the Gibb River Road, and the uh, entire way down the WA coastline to get to where we are now, in Esperance. We uh, set off with 30 grand, and uh, what do you reckon, was that pretty, pretty, pretty doable? Pretty realistic, I think. Pretty realistic, yeah. yeah we've, we will definitely go over, but not by much. And um, in saying that, we have learnt a few things along the way. We probably lived the high life at the very start of the trip and spent a bit too much money on <laughs> buying all the good food at the shops and doing Alcohol. everything. And at the end of the day, we knew it's a once in a lifetime trip, so we're happy to spend a bit more money here and there. And um, you can always make money back. So yeah, 30 grand, being pretty realistic. I reckon you could probably do that. Do Even a, in 12 months. Do an eight, eight to 12 month trip with that same budget. But uh, just because we're moving so quickly, we're going through it fast. Um, if you pull up in a spot, like we've done places where we spent like almost a week in an area and you're just living off one tank of fuel and your food shop for a couple of weeks and that's been 
awesome. Yeah, awesome. You're yeah. living pretty cheaply, but when you're moving, you know, we've done 30 or almost 30,000 Ks in that time. It's pretty crazy. The one thing that we have picked up on the road would be downloading the Fuel Map Australia app. Yeah, it's pretty much just an app to tell you where the cheapest fuel is. And when we left originally, we didn't think we would need to, like we, we didn't really care about where the cheapest fuel was. We knew it was all pretty relative, but at the end of the day, five to 10 cents, like this is 140 litres, that's a big difference. Um, and over time, if you're filling up multiple times a week, it will save in the long run. Um, one big thing as well, even if you don't download the fuel map or the a fuel app, is um, look for the service stations that are unmanned. So you can't walk in and pay someone behind a counter because they're, in, they're usually always cheaper. five to ten cents cheaper just by the fact that you don't have anyone there serving you. You just got to have a credit card or just your, your normal bank card insert into a machine and yeah, get your fuel manually rather than having someone there. So we just fill up pretty much whenever we can at unmanned service stations. So Biggest lessons learnt? It's a good one that not every day on the road is going to be perfect. Yeah, you will have bad days. That's just the nature of no, it. When you're travelling in close quarters, out of a car, your whole life is just on wheels. You're moving every day, you know, a bit of a different routine to living at home. Um, we met a couple in Cape York that told us early on just to be prepared for that. And uh, I think knowing that moving forward, we're sort of in a bit better off um, when you have a bad weather day, you know, or your car breaks down or something goes wrong. You just got to cop on the chin and move on. Um, doesn't happen every day. Every day is not a bad day. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good days and it's well, well outweighs the bad days. Yeah. I guess a good thing to talk about would be tips and tricks uh, and things we've learnt. Uh, one of those is free camping. We sort of didn't free camp a lot at the start no. um, when we should have. And once you sort of get into a routine of finding free camps, there is some really good camps out there. And some it's, of our best ones. Some yeah. of our best camps have been free camps and um, we use the the app wiki camps i think it costs like seven or eight dollars and um Download yeah, it. pretty much everyone on the road travels with that and like it could be just even finding where you're going to fill up water you know where you can get drinking water from in each town it tells you where it is if you haven't had a shower in a week and you want to find a shower there's places you can pay you know three or four dollars and have a shower even sometimes free yep. um but that's been a good a good thing good we use that every day i think we probably will tow on our next lap uh i don't we don't have any regrets on not, not towing towing. this trip uh it's actually been really good just not having to worry about a trailer we've nailed the weather the whole way through except for a few days um you know yeah it's just been nice not having to go duck down a track and worry about if you can turn around at the end or having to reverse out or unhook your trailer because you want to go off-roading somewhere here or there i guess our favorite thing would just be the whole trip in general which is um pretty easy to say mm. the whole experience the whole lifestyle change has yeah. just been awesome um but if we were to pin it down to one thing it's been the people we've met, met. constantly meeting new people every second day you're just meeting people they're crossing paths they're going one way you're going the other way or we even linked up with some people in Broome and we end up traveling with a few couples for close to five weeks, five weeks which yeah. is unreal and like the best time bit weird when you like sort of split up again and you're back on your own but it's it's also good so um the yeah. friendships are just next level yeah there's people we've they're met just people, completely different yeah we've met people that we'll probably you know catch up with again and they've life friends for sure Absolutely. and um it's just been yeah it's been an experience in its mm -hmm. own and like you know you meet someone for like a couple of hours and all of a sudden you're best mates just <laughs> over a few beers which is pretty sick how good is that mate i think josh is spending most of his money on fruity hawaiian shirts as well so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, he's looks a, good. I've, I've bumped into him a couple of times i've bumped yeah. into him up north i bumped into him uh, just recently on my van trip yep and uh to say that he's having the time of his life is an understatement yeah he's look loving that, it look how stoked they are yeah, they're yeah. having fun so good Joshy, if you're watching this you Good on you, mate. Actually, so, he's coming back to work soon. Is he? Oh, yeah, he's I'm, nearly I'm, I'm, I'm better not the... <laughs> we'll see you back here. Yeah, mate, sounds good. <laughs> so. And I can really back up what Josh said about going to service stations that are unmanned. And you see a lot of them in the bush because like I was saying before, nobody wants to work out there. Mm -hmm. So these unmanned service stations are everywhere and they cost... There's one near where I live, it's actually 20 cents per litre cheaper to yeah, go wow. to the unmanned than it is if you're buying 98 to go to the unmanned than it is to go to a survey. And the cost of uh, fuel at the moment, that's by any savings is a good savings. Big savings, mm -hmm. yeah, big savings. Now, next we're gonna to go to Steph and Harley. You guys have already met them, of course, because they're doing a massive lap of Australia right now. I've joined them for a little bit of it on the West Coast, and they have some very, very cool tips of their own. Hey guys, it's Steph and Harley from Four Wheel Drive 24-7's new series, Off Grid, and we are currently on our trip around Australia. So we are currently here at James Price Point, top of WA, just past Broome. Absolutely stunning. We thought we'd just uh, share with you a few tips and tricks that we've learnt about uh, caravanning and travelling on your own around Oz. Uh, our budget, originally we had set out, we, we sort of did two rough budgets. We, 
we worked on uh, about, about ten thousand dollars each. Ten grand each for six months, uh, so about twenty grand. And we were aiming to put into a joint account three hundred dollars a week each to live with. Yeah, so six hundred dollars for fuel, for groceries, for booze, for. Yeah. And then have a little bit each side for you know for little expenses we want to spend on on ourselves shopping. Uh, have have a little Mojo fire extinguisher account for your car because no doubt things will happen and you will need to go to it an auto elec or you know go to a mechanic get your brakes redone get your mud guard welded back on stuff will inevitably go wrong and that's fine but just be be a little bit prepared for it so have a little bit of money stashed away for those times yeah um and obviously free camping is is the best one which everyone who's traveling by himself know is free camping is obviously the best but but knowing it won't always happen there is going to be times where you are paying for a, a power site um, so just be prepared for that for it as well yeah in terms of like the budget that we spent for the trip and our biggest learning. Probably one of the biggest things is um, knowing in the last week or two before you leave, there will be a number of just $150, $200 purchases. All the little things that you leave right to the end to actually purchase actually add up, surprisingly. Yeah, so that, that pops up on you a little bit right, right before your trip starts. It's just going out and buying those last few things, and that's probably why we've been so prepared with everything was just spending that time before you leave is just just purchasing those extra items but it does add up at the end of the day another thing i would probably say as well that obviously you're traveling around australia you're going to go and see the most epic places not every single day is going to be like that and that's okay like find joy in the mundane things because there will be a lot of mundane days where you're just doing laundry or you're you know, you're just driving for 10 hours or whatever it is, there's going to be a lot of just yeah. real low-key, un, unexciting moments and yeah. find joy in that and also give yourself permission. Like, you're going to get exhausted travelling around Australia. Like, there are days where we're just absolutely gassed and give yourself permission to have a little bit of a sleep in and it's okay if you don't want to go out and be out all day adventuring and exploring. Like, if you're looking at towing, if that's something for me, just do a few smaller trips, you know, get used to it, get used to the handling, braking, taking corners a little bit wider, Stephanie. <laughs> um, Hot tip, can confirm, that actually helps. Have a good line of sight, you know, if you need to boost your chair up a little bit so you can actually see the ground and see the ditches that you're about to drive into, that, that's also really helpful. Do a little bit of practice, don't just head out straight on the highway because it can be a little bit intimidating and you will get yourself in the spots, but yeah, that's one of the last part of the fun of it, you know, get yourself into spots, have a hard time with it because you know, you've got a time in the hands and that's, that's and you've the got adventure. A, and you've got all your recovery gear, so who cares if you get a bit dirty and a bit old, it's all good. That's it. That's, that's all, all from good. us. Let's grab another drink and cheers to that. Cheers to Right, mate. I don't know if that's got you for often, but I'll tell you what, for me, I can't wait to get back out there. I've actually never been more keen to do a big lap than watching those guys talking. Know, like where Joshy and Claudia were talking on the beach there. I Esperance. was like, oh. Yeah, Esperance. It's good. And that's and that's their home right yeah. now. Yeah. So look, folks, if you are dreaming, I know you are. Everyone dreams of the big lap. Here's something I want you to do. Figure out a budget. It's going to shock you. Figure out your budget, but then get a big red texter. A, like a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, huge. Yeah, novelty yeah, texture. That's it. And, yeah, novelty <laughs> texture. And put a big circle around a date in the calendar. I don't care what that date is. It might be five years' time. But once you put a circle around a date, you watch how much things change inside. You will just go, okay, well, it's real. Time to go. It's happening. It's happening. Yep. But for now, keep dreaming. Yep. Make it happen, folks. I will be. Make it happen. Mate, I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Vehicle choice. Yeah, this is a big one because... I've obviously thought about doing a lap one day as well. and You've done half a lap. I've done, yeah, half a lap, yep. yeah. And I think a big thing for me is I would my SAS Hilux is my first car. Yep. And I've always, I've romanticized the idea of doing it in that. Romanticized? Yeah, that's a word. I looked at it before wow. in the dictionary. Yeah, so the, the issue I have though is that car is a bit tired. Yep. I've wheeled it pretty hard. It's like, do I, you know keep that one and try and make it work or yep. do I trade up into a newer vehicle mm -hmm. which then will factor into your budget massively now yeah you can sell the vehicle at the yep. end but you still got to fork out the cost at the start which yep. is and it's like how do you know if the vehicle you've got is the right one for the setup yep 
uh, and ha- or should you upgrade? And I guess that comes down to you've got to answer those questions as well with your budget yep. you set up. If you're towing, for example, Big time. if I was taking my SAS Hilux, I would not be towing a 20-foot caravan. <laughs> no, you would not. No, you would not. Yeah. But uh, you raise a really valid point. Uh, M8 Tim mm-hmm. went around Australia in a troopy. He knew he wanted to sleep in the back of the troopy. Yep. Not for me. That is not for me. I would not do it that way, but he loved it. Yeah, he freaking loved it. Loved it. And the way he decked the back of that troopy out six months before. Amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yep. When he got back, he sold it, bought a new D-Max. Yep. And I think, I, I mean, I'd have to check with him, but I think he got pretty much his money back on the troopy I think, No, I think he made money. Yeah. I think he made money on the troopy when he got back. So it is something to factor in. How you like your setups. He knew he was going to sleep in the back. If mm-hmm. that's for you, that's the way to rock and roll. But setups are something to really think about because it is going to impact your budget. Yeah, and that comes down again to that shakedown thing too. Yeah, like if you've got it, a vehicle yeah. where you think you might like to take it and you go out camping, really think about, would this be right for me on the road? Can I do this for 12 months? Yep. Can I sit under this awning for 12 months? Yeah. Ask yourself those questions. Well, mate, I guess there's some pretty interesting points there, but uh, what do you guys reckon? You know, I'm sure there'll be some interesting opinions. There'll be a lot of you guys out there who've done the trip, yep. are planning the trip, yep. or want to do it one day. So, or are on the trip. Yeah, right, right now. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If let you're us watching know. this from a remote beach, a yeah. mountainside, somewhere r- cool in the middle of Australia, yeah. let us know. There, we, there might be something we've missed, so chuck it in the comments below because yeah, it'll be a good place to look back Defi- to. I'm definitely reading these comments because mm-hmm. I reckon you guys are going to have heaps of examples of ways yeah. to save money on the road. And tell us where you are too. If you are on the road, I'll be stoked. Yeah, Find out where maybe you are we'll go and we'll pop there with his camera. <laughs> you never know. Like, hey. You hear a big Y62, that could be me. <laughs> Well, mate, it's time to move on. And I guess uh, the next thing we want to chat about is a few weeks ago on our social media, we put up a question after our Vic High Country trip, which was sensational, by the way. chilly. Loved it. It was cold. (laughs) We had to uh, cuddle up at night. I had the complete opposite because I was up north, 40 degrees. Sweating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How crazy is that? Different sizes of the country. And that's the beautiful thing about Australia. Go and see it. Anyway, (laughs) I digress. But uh, yeah, so uh, we put a question up for Pete. The nicest bloke in four-wheel driving is Pete. Absolute gentleman. And we got... A, just a, a swag load of questions yeah. for yeah, we Pete. Really, we really did. Now, Pete went and answered just about all of them, lost his voice, but let's hear what he had to say. Thank you, fellas. Of course, we're in Tasmania. Pete and I have been down here for a couple of weeks, touring around. Having a great time. Exactly right. And I, I think the big question on a lot of people's minds is they saw the Victorian high country uh, trip and obviously the three litre, the big the big GU, <laughs> um, didn't have, didn't have a... a as, uh, wasn't one of the better trips for it, was it? It wasn't the best ending for it, unfortunately. No, unfortunately. And it had a few little mechanical issues. So I think it's only appropriate we might just go through some of the backstory on that yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and share what happened. You know, at the end of the day, you prep your cars, you think you've done everything you can, and uh, you get out on these trips and things go wrong, don't they? Oh, and, and, guilty and, a million <laughs> times, mate. And at the end of that trip, I had troubles through that trip. I had trouble starting the car. I don't know if you remember, I'd be cranking it, and then I'd get it started, and I was too... I didn't want to turn it off in case I couldn't get it started. Yeah. And as we know, the Vic High Country, there's some big hills. <laughs> yeah, you don't want mechanical that. issues anywhere, but especially don't want them in the Vic High Country with these hills. And long story short, we, we got some bad fuel, mm. um, which just had a flow on effect. And it was pretty hard. We did a lot out there trying to diagnose it and get it going. Certainly and did. we did a, um, a fuel rail swap out. Mm. Um, you may remo- remember. I, I, I do. I, I, I thought. I thought it might have been something as simple as just a fuel filter. We changed yeah. the fuel filter across, and, um, and and there were signs that it was sort of starting to um, deteriorate even more. Yeah, yeah, and then ended up on the back of a, a flat toe out of the bush. <laughs> so it wasn't one of the highlights for me. A ripper trip, but we got it back to the workshop, and um, you know we spent a lot of time, and it was just a, a trial and error process until we we found out what the issue was. A byproduct of that, you know, new fuel rail, new injectors new filters we put an additional filter in an yeah, additional smart. pump in yep. um, yeah yeah it, obviously it, the big three litre lives again mate we're down here in tasmania and it's been driving some pretty wild tracks down this way i tell you I've, I've, i'm not biased to any one brand i just love four-wheel drive and yep. i love getting out with my yep. mates but i've really grown attached to this car i've done some k's in it yeah. and i've traveled a little bit around with you blokes and I, I just thoroughly enjoy wheeling it it's just a it's a strong capable car and it's probably going to cause a you know a bit of chit chat about you, you know, know no it's it not is. toyota but it's a nissan but it's, it's a three litre patrol i mean there's a stack of them around they probably don't get the accolades of the td 42s and things yep. like that but i've seen this thing out in the scrub and apart from one little mechanical issue that could happen to anyone really yeah yeah bad is, fuel it's very impressive yeah. mate look there's been a stack of questions actually on our social media yep um people have, uh, just want to ask you a couple of questions so it's okay i might just run Appreciate through it. a few yeah, of yeah. these this one here from um simmons plumbing did the throttle controller contribute to the car issues on your recent trip no no, no. it was all fuel no. it was all fuel and 
like anything, it's a process of elimination, but it, it was, yeah, no, it was just, yeah, it was fuel related. And yeah, had it have been anything except for the, like the injectors, the, the, the pump, we could have fixed it in the bush, but when a pump goes, as you know, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's almost the end, of the end of the game. Here's a question from um, A underscore McNee. Is there any benefit to a throttle controller on a vehicle that has been remapped? It's a good question. There is, and, mm. and Ruben, have a look at Ruben's car, he's supercharged and it's got <laughs> all sorts of things going on under there. It's got a lot of remaps going on. And in Ruben's case, he because he's making so much power, he actually uses it on the economy mode, so he's dampening the throttle response. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it gives him that flexibility, you know, when he That's needs it, if he feels he needs to sharpen it, just a flick of a button, the new X has the app, yeah. you know, you just hit it on the app and away you go. So it just gives you heaps of flexibility yeah. on how uh, the car responds. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Here we go, this is, this is, this is more like it. Um, ben Della, if the three litre blue, what would you replace the motor with? Jeez, you know we think about this, and credit to the car, it hasn't yeah. blown. Yeah. Um, I don't know, well, I, I just love the sound of a V8. Yeah. I, I love diesels, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but you know, there's a part of me, if I could drop maybe just a cheeky little six litre or something in there to get some noise, You'll imagine. Um, that'd be great. But until this decides to retire, which yeah. I reckon I'll retire before that, yeah. um, We'll just we'll we'll continue wheeling the, the three litre. It's yeah, no, I don't blame you, mate. It's if it's not broke, why fix it? But thanks for those questions, guys. That, yeah, that cheers. Was, there's a whole Appreciate stack of really really cool questions there, and there's, there was the heaps interest. more to go through, mate. But we don't have time for any more questions. We got tracks to drive. Fantastic. So I'm going to throw it back to the boys. Probably having a little a caramel latte cheers, boys. In, in the in the shed environment. Over Good to you, on you, boys. lads. Thanks very much. Thanks, Pete. He's a fountain of knowledge, that man. He is. He is an absolute gentleman. If, I you, get, that if you ever get a chance to meet Pete, go up and shake his hand, because like I say, he really is one of the yep. nicest blokes you'll meet. Well, mate, here's his next one. So, Speaking our, of nice blokes. Speaking of nice blokes, well, we use the term nice, we use the term, you know, <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, no, he's an absolute legend, but uh, we got on like a house on fire on our recent trip, and not long after that, young Jesse, our newest presenter, yep. he got married. He did, but he got married in a way that this is so Jesse. It, this it, is so Jesse. It kind Jesse. of shocked me. I, I thought it was a parody. Yeah. Are you really doing that? Yeah. He used his junker. Yeah, his GQ Patrol. <laughs> yeah. Which he calls the junker. He calls the junker, yeah, yeah. As it's his wedding, wedding car. As a wedding car. Not only that, mate. <laughs> That's a sick photo. Dude. It is a sick photo. The next day, oh, look, he's even ironed his shirt too. I, I wonder if his missus did that. Oh, no, his missus did that for sure. Yeah, he, doesn't, he didn't actually have an iron, he told me. So. I don't even reckon that's his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably his dad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Jess, he's not here to defend himself. But what I was getting at is the next day, yep. he went out wheeling with some mates in his junker. Yeah, and that's if that's not a four wheel driver through and through, I don't frost know what it is. It. Absolutely, absolutely frost it. Frost it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good old Jesse. How good is that? No, well, uh, he's a mad dog. He really is. Now, we've been getting a lot of questions just recently asking, literally a million, if I've left the show. He's here. I'm he's here. here. I'm real. Yep. We're more real. Stuff. Yep. He's still no, here. I think I think where everyone's getting a bit confused is that we have been dipping our toe in some touring stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Which, we've been doing a few. We've almost been dividing and conquering a little, little bit. bit. A little bit. And I've got to say, I am absolutely loving it. Next year, I'm probably going to have the biggest and busiest year I've ever had. So am I. Yeah, so yeah, are yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Geez, you've got some plans next year. Oh yes, sir. You're going to be getting in an aeroplane. Mm, Roger that. Yeah. Uh, I'm flying we'll talk places. About that later. Yeah. But I'm not going anywhere. I'm here to stay. We are just diversifying a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's all we're doing. And I hope you're enjoying the content because I'll tell you what, we are making a heap of it and loving doing it. Mate, and one more thing. Yeah. Sean and Jesse, where are they? They're in Tassie right now. So mm -hmm. the two of them, we had the Adelaide show and a few other bits and pieces we had to do up here. So we've missed out on Tassie this year, which guts me because I love you and Tassie I so much. love Tassie. Yep. So Sean and Jesse are down there filming at the moment and they've had some dramas. They have. So make sure you keep an eye out for that episode mm -hmm. because it's going to be a cracker. Now, speaking of crackers, it's time to jump into your shed, not Physically, because that'd be weird, we get kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> but virtually, time of the year that I love the best. Rigs fails. Let's get into it, mate. Let's get straight into it. Rigs. Who we got here? Tom Whelan with his 70 series build. What do we got so, here? Like, the, the certain thing that ticks over in a male's brain is that when you're working on a car, especially exhaust, and you happen to take the exhaust off, you just can't do that activity without starting it yeah <laughs> i did this the other day <laughs> how's this gonna sound oh, Ooh, oh. grumpy yeah oh <laughs> no mercy i hope it was warm when he did that goodness <laughs> gracious me oh. Uh, 
Probably going to have to cut uh, that one down. We might have bit. to edit that one there, but that's yeah. uh, Yep. <laughs> Cheers, Tom. We get what you meant. Oh, oh my wow. lordy mama. What's Nathan, he done? Snap the radius arm. Yeah, he has. And he's used about 32 ratchet straps and some mm -hmm. cable ties, big ones. Hey. And a medical bandage as well, by the look of it. If it works, mate. If it works and gets you back home, then mm -hmm. that is yeah, that is one heck of a bush mechanic fix. Yeah, that We've is very impressive. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have indeed. But uh, yeah, snap radius arm is no mean feat too. So that's pretty impressive, mate. Well done. Yeah, yeah just snap a radius arm. Nathan Nib, uh, enough straps to make a replacement radius arm. There you, you go. snap one of those. Yeah, it'd probably get a bit more flex to a bit more gear oh, than yeah. radius arm. <laughs> What else we got here? Oh, What's actually, that? I've seen this happen before. So um, that's a handy bit of bushwork. Borolula to Karumba from Merrin Broken, Chapman. But that, you know what? That's exactly what we had to do with Ruben's boat trailer, just to get it back to the workshop, so that we mm -hmm. weld it up and brace it all. Yeah, because that'll keep it in one spot. That's exactly what it did. Just that's very smart. Spot. Look, they've even drilled a hole through yeah. the timber and yeah. cut it. It's cut to the chassis as well. And that's they've notched a, out the old uh, the, the leaf spring bits yeah. there. That is a very ingenious bush fix. You'll probably keep going. Mate. Yeah, just leave it. Just leave it. See what happens. Holy heck! Wow, that is a, is that barbed wire fence they've used to keep it? I think it is. And they've used a ratchet spanner as well. That's an expensive uh, fix, but- It really, um, really is an expensive fix. Jack Walker snapped a leaf spring outside of Catherine and drove 300 k's to Darwin and fixed it there. There you go. Wow. And he probably got his ratchet spanner back as well. Yeah, I reckon so. They're pretty tough. They are. Mate. That is uh, less than ideal. I don't know much, but I know that's not supposed to happen. No, but what I like about this one, mate, is the story of mateship and just yeah. helping each other out. Looks yeah. like, sounds like a whole bunch of blokes came out to help him. Middle good of mates night. and yeah, yeah middle dropped of everything night. to come out and help him get his pride and joy back on all fours. So. Got it back on all fours with the first attempt, with just a little bit of damage to the side panel, the door on the, uh, on the old driver's side there. And he drove it home afterwards. Two and a half hours home. Yeah, had no, lights on, the the dash. no lights on the no dash. No lights on the dash. I thought it had lights on no, no lights, lights on, on the dash. dash. Yeah. Jeepers, creepers. Well done, mate. I'm glad you weren't hurt. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's got the stanky leg. <laughs> <laughs> it's got crooked eye. <laughs> Found out D22 stock tie rods don't like a three inch lift. Luckily they have, oh yeah, there you go. Okay. I wonder which way he was turning. Like yeah. one of those wheels is correct. Half the car wanted to turn one Half way. the car's good. Mm. Other half, not so good. Well, the good news is he's found a weak spot in his vehicle and he's gotten stronger stuff to fix it. So Hopefully. that's the best way Hopefully to be. He has. Uh, this is my friend Katie's car. So Matthew sent this video through on Facebook. This is his friend Katie's car. Just bought four weeks before she sunk it. Katie. And she's uh, new to four-wheel driving and it's her second time out. Well, that is a pretty intense way to learn, mate. Unfortunately, the motor took on water. I'm still rebuilding it for her. It's going to take a long time. She's giving me permission. So, uh, Katie, we're sorry uh, you did some damage to your engine, but... Oh, Katie. Let's see what happens here, mate. Is this one first. All right, what's she going to do here? What's she going to do here? Why? 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 Turns out the winch doesn't work. No, why? It's a dam. Katie, you gave it a red hot go. She did give it a red hot go, and I, I guess, mate, that's probably, unfortunately, no one wants to get that much damage no, to the vehicle. That's, that's but a kick in the guts. That's uh, a good way to, I guess, learn from now. Yep. I mean, turns out the winch doesn't work. I, next time, she'll probably pull it she'll out and try check that beforehand. Before she goes so. in, that's for sure. Yeah. Ah, what's going on here, mate? Well, interesting little picture this. Remember mm -hmm. when I said we came into Exmouth late at night, couldn't find anywhere? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that look like a glorious campsite? It does. No, the highway's right here. We yeah, trucked really. past all night. There's a bunch of rubbish bins here. Mate, you have a beautiful uh, Y62. You have an amazing off-road caravan and you're sitting on a milk crate. <laughs> you know what the milk crate's for? Why? It's so I can step into my van if I don't want to put my thing down. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, Fair enough. Well, with there's some absolutely outstanding comments here, 6, mate. 6,300 plus comments on that photo. Yeah, that is insane. You people had a lot to say about it. Riley yeah. Backman said, I wonder who Sean is thinking of me too. That is great. <laughs> yeah, lovely. probably not. Look at this place. Jeff Mellor. Because the player's going to play, 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 and the hater's going to hate, hate, hate. Uh, he wasn't just thinking that. He was uh, playing that through the speakers on his van. So. You have to. You can't just... Yeah, that's, that's Taylor, by the way. If you're watching, Tay Tay, catch up with you soon. She won't be watching. <laughs> she won't be watching, mate. <laughs> All right, we've got prizes to give away. I'm going to give away a $100 snatch voucher to Tom. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sound of his vehicle. Fair enough, mate. I'm going to give away the, hunt, the other $100 snatch voucher yep. to Katie because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. she lost her engine and yep. made a mistake she'll probably never make again, but yep. at least that $100 snatch voucher will go towards getting her a new recovery kit or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it to good use, Katie, and it's a lesson well learned. I'm sorry you had to go through that, folks. If you've failed, we all have, or you've got a rig, most of us have, send them in. Yeah, we go them all. Four yeah, 24 7 fails. Hashtag win stuff. 24 7 rigs. Yeah, good, mate. Or have you got a bush mechanic fix? Yeah. I like seeing those. I like seeing those too. Especially those with all sorts of wire and everything back in the car. There's anything you can do to get yourself back on the road. If it's stupid and it works, it ain't stupid. If it's stupid and it works, it ain't stupid. Think about that. Mm. Well, mate, that's us from Beers from the Shed. It now, is. 
as we mentioned throughout this whole episode, we've got some awesome stuff coming up yeah, for you really over on yep. your trips. I've got a big tough one coming up as well. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, it's going to be wild. It's going to be cool, folks. Keep in touch with us. Hashtags. Uh, like, subscribe, hit the little buttons, the dingy things. Check mm -hmm. us out on TikTok. We're on everything now, aren't we? We're everywhere, across the board. You can't get away from us, and that's a good thing because the content is coming through thick and fast. We're loving it. Mate, we absolutely are. And uh, make sure you go over to the 4 247com website because you're an improved brand spanking. So go and check that out. For us, though, it is certainly enough for you. It's time to go to the pub. <laughs> I reckon we clean up in here and go to the pub, folks. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Beers in the Shed. Let's get out of here. Catch you next time. Let's get out of here. <laughs>